Hello, today we shall <clears throat> discuss about computing integrals. We shall not enter into theoretical details. We shall talk about <clears throat> Riemann integrals, integral from A to B of f of x dx. <clears throat> The main method to compute such integrals is based on Leibniz Newton formula, which says that capital F of B, this equals capital F of A, where capital F is a function whose derivative equals F on the interval AB. Such a function is called a primitive of, K of F. Of course, if a function has one primitive, actually it has infinitely many because the derivatives of constants are zero. So, okay. Now, so further to compute an integral, we need to compute primitives. The usual notation for, for the set of primitives of a function f is the following. So this is a symbol for the set of all those functions which are primitives of f. Okay, now to compute primitives, first of all, we have a table of primitive of elementary primitives, which is written on the left here. Every <coughs> book of calculus has a table like this, which contains the usual primitives. This it is supposed that this table is known from now on. Okay. And now we shall see how to use the table and to how to compute primitives which are of a different kind of what's written in the uh, in this uh, table. Okay, so <clears throat> for example, if we want to how to use the table, if you want to compute integral from dx over root of two minus let's say 6x squared, we, we have to observe that in our table there is an integral which is, which, is a, which is close to this one, namely this one, which is arc sine of x over a. Of course, plus a constant, I don't write it anymore. So the question is how to change this integral in order to obtain exactly the formula. The difference is given by the number six here, which da do, does not appear in the basic formula. So that's very simple. We take off the common factor six. And we get this. And now we have this integral. which is exactly as in the table, in the place of the number a, we have one over square root of three. So it will be one over square root of six times arc sine of x times root of order, root of three, plus a constant of course. Okay, so with this technique, one can change a little bit different integrals to obtain something from the table. Now, besides the, the table, we have the integration by parts, one of the most useful formula in all mathematics. Integration by parts. The formula is the following. <clears throat> integral from f of x times g prime of x equals f of x times g of x minus integral of f prime of x times g of x dx. <clears throat> the proof is very simple. It's based on the uh, derivation of a product. Okay, so the idea in exercises is to 
make a good choice for the function f. G, o, G prime of x will uh, result. To, to apply the formula, as we, we, we know the function f and g prime, we need the function f, we have it, but also we need the function f prime, which must be computed. And below this, uh, we have the function g prime, and we need the function g of x. Who is g of x? It is the primitive of g prime of x. So this is these are the preparations. Let's take an example. For example, integral of uh, x at three times logarithm of x. Dx. Here we shall choose f. We have two possibilities here, among others. Uh, to x to choose f as x at three, and the other choice is to choose f logarithm of x. G prime in that case it will be x at three. Let's take this second option. F prime will be one over x, while g will be the primitive of x at three, which is x at four over four, according to the table. Now <clears throat> this choice will lead us. To, uh, to a simpler integral because it will give us x, far, x at 4 over 4 times logarithm of x minus integral of f prime, which is 1 over x, times x at 4 over 4. And now everything can be computed because we finally have this here. We simplify by x and we get x at 3, so it will be minus x at 4 over 16 plus a constant. So <clears throat> this is the idea. If we uh, would uh, take the other choice with uh, f to be x at 3, then the g prime must be logarithm of x. Here you, we need to compute the primitive of logarithm of x, which is not impossible to be computed. We Actually, we shall compute it now. but Anyway, uh, this uh, choice is better because in this way, the function logarithm of x disappeared actually by derivation. So this is the basic idea. We, uh, logarithm of x must be derivated in order to uh, simplify the integral. Okay, let's take another example for it. An example of the same type is the following integral of uh, x times c at x dx. The same idea here. Uh, uh, the function x is here. Uh, complicated. Uh, the exponential derivated or integrated gives us the same. So it it does not simplify. Does not. It is not more complicated or uh, more simplified. So. We shall choose f to be x. Consequently, g prime will be e at x. The derivative of f will be 1. The primitive of g prime will be at e at x. So we shall get x times e at x minus integral of f e at x. And it gives us this function, of course, plus a constant. These are the primitives of the function x times e at x. The same idea. Uh, by com by applying uh, the integration by parts, we obtain a simpler integral. Um, let's take another, for example, integral of um, e at x times sine of x. Here, at the first view here, it seems that it doesn't work with... Uh, uh, with um, integration by parts simply because the exponential and the trigonometric function are, are somehow circular from the point of view of the derivative. By integrating or by derivating them, they do not simplify, they do not complicate. However, the, the, the integral can be computed in the following way. Let's take f. Actually, it doesn't matter the choice. If we choose f to be sine of x, then g prime of x equals e at x. So the derivative of f will be cosine of x, while the primitive of e at x will be e at x. So by applying the formula, we get e at x times sine of x minus integral of e at x times cosine of x. 
here we have a, again, it seems that the method doesn't work simply because we obtain an integral which is of the same type as the initial one. It is not more complicated, it is not uh, simpler. But here the idea is to continue by compute, by applying uh, the integration by parts. But attention, we, we must make the same choice. If we choose here in the beginning f to be the trigonometric function, we must continue in the same way. So f of x will be cosine of x this time. Don't change it to the exponential. And of course, g prime of x will be the exponential. So f prime of x will be min minus sine of x, while g of x will be the exponential, e at x. And now we continue to apply. We arrive here. We continue to apply the integration by parts for it is e at x sine of x minus parentheses e at x cosine of x plus, yes, we have two minus one from the formula and one from the derivative of cosine integral of e at x sine of x. And what we observe is that we've got the same in integral as in the beginning, this one, but this is with a sign minus in front of it. So consequently, if we shift it to the left side, we shall get that two integral from e at x sine of x dx equals e at x times sine of x minus cosine of x, and consequently, our integral will be simply e at x over 2 times sine of x minus cosine of x, of course, plus a constant. This is how we can use integration by parts to compute such integrals. OK, now we shall continue with another type with rational functions. So integration. of rational functions. What a rational function is, is a ratio of two polynomials. So we are talking about functions of this type, where P and Q are polynomials. OK, there are several types standard types of uh, these integrals. We shall start with the first type, which is integral of dx over ax plus b. Now, this is directed from the table, <clears throat> because from the table we have that this is e this equals 1 over a times logarithm of module of x ax plus b, of course, plus a constant. Uh, one can verify it directly, but uh, it's not. We also have this formula in the directly from the table. Now, the second type is when we have above, we have one, and below, we have now a quadratic function. Okay, what's the idea here? Is to use the canonical form for the quadratic function, the canonical form for. Of, so use the canonical form for the quadratic function. What, in, what that means, the, the canonical form for a quadratic function means to write it as a sum of squares or as a subtraction of squares. This can be done in a simpler way, for example, x squared minus 3x plus 2 can be written in the canonical form in the, the following way. We must form here a square such that the first two terms must be x squared minus 3x. Here we added 9 over 4, so we must subtract it, plus 2. So we get x minus 3 over 2 uh, minus 1 over 4. This is the canonical form of the function x squared minus 3x plus 2. 
Okay. So now, how to use it? Let's integrate this. We put it in the canonical form, which means this. Okay, and now we have to, to look to the table. In the table, there is something close to what we have here. Uh, namely, we have a uh, formula number five here, yes? But instead of x, we have x minus three over two. It, it can, we can replace x by x minus three over two simply because the derivative of x minus three over two it's one exactly like the derivative of x. So according to formula number five, which is written here, we get that this integral will be, now in our case, a is the number one over two because here is one over two squared. And instead of x, we have x minus three over two. So that will be one over two times a logarithm of module of x minus 3 over 2, this is instead of x, minus 1 over 2 over x minus 3 over 2 plus 1 over 2, plus a constant, of course. And this will give us, finally, we simplify here, we get logarithm of module of x minus 2 over x minus 1 uh, plus a constant. This is the primitive of our function. So this is the second type when on the denom den numerator we have one and on the denominator we have a quadratic function. Okay, now the third type will be integral of a function, a polynomial function of the first degree over a function of the second degree, so a quadratic function. Now, what's the idea here? The idea here is to you to use the following obvious integral, integral of f prime of x over f of x dx. This equals logarithm of module of f of x. Uh, for obvious reason, if we differentiate this function, we shall obtain f prime of uh, over f. So uh, this is the idea. How to apply it is to build at the numerator the derivative of the numerator, of the denominator. So, for example, let's compute integral of uh, x plus 2 over x squared minus 3x plus, uh, let's say, plus 4. Okay. So, first, we need to see who is the derivative of the denominator. It is 2x minus 3. We shall form 2x minus 3 here in two steps. First of all, the coefficient of x will be by multiplication. So we shall multiply the numerator with 2, 2x plus 4, and in order not to change the value, we shall divide in front of the integral by 2. This is the first step. Now we have the coefficient of x. Good, it's 2. And now we shall subtract and add 3. So that is 1 over 2, integral of 2x minus 3. We shall associate this. Plus now we, we add it and we get 7 over x squared minus 3x plus 4, which means 1 over 2 integral of 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 3x plus 4 plus 1 over 2 times integral of 4 of 7, sorry. So 7 over x squared minus 3x over 4 plus 4. And now the first integral it is 1 over 2, logarithm of module of x squared minus 3x plus 4. We applied exactly the formula, the above formula, this one, written here. We shall see that in this case the module is not necessary, but for the first moment, let's write it like it, plus, and 
The second integral, it's a type two. We shall compute it. Uh, just an observation, the expression x squared minus 3x plus 4 is positive for all x because delta, the discriminant, is negative. So here we can, one can write without modules, 1 over 2, logarithm of x. But in general, the module must stay, plus 7 over 2, integral of 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 4. And now we shall focus on this integral, which is type 2. Actually, we know it, but let's uh, remember a little bit because here there will be another case. So here we must take x squared minus 3x plus 2, plus 4, sorry. And to form the canonic, to put it in the canonical form. First, the square will be x minus 3 over 2 squared. And here we must subtract 9 over 4, which has added here, and plus 4. That means x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 7 over 4. So this time, the canonical form is a sum of squares. Okay, so integral of 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 4. It's integral from 1 over x minus 3 over 2 squared plus, let's write it, root of four, 7 over 2 squared. And now we apply formula from the table, formula number 6. This is exactly what we have here. Instead of x, we have x minus 3 over 2. So that will be 1 over a, so it is 2 over root of 7 times r tangent of x minus 3 over 2 over root of 7 over 2. Of course, here plus a constant, we can uh, avoid the ratio on the denominator and write it uh, in a simpler form. OK. And now the last type. of a rational function, so type number four. Type number four is of the following uh, idea. It's the following type. Uh, we have two polynomials, and if, if the degree of the numerator is greater or equal than the degree of the denominator, then we must write this ratio as the quotient plus the remainder over q of x. That means to use um, the division formula of that of two polynomials. For example, let's compute the integral of two x at three minus x plus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. So let's put it, not to have problems with the denominator, let's take it minus 2x plus uh, 5. Okay, so we observe that the degree of the numerator is 3, the degree of the numer denominator is 2, so we must divide them as polynomials. <clears throat> this gives us 4x squared minus 11x plus 1. Uh, so plus uh, 4x, 4, which is minus 4x squared, plus 8x minus 20. So we get minus 3x minus 19. 
so the quotient is 2x plus 4, and the, re and the remainder is minus 3x minus 19. So this equals integral of 2x plus 4 over x squared minus 2x plus 5 dx minus integral of 3, uh, sorry, I uh, change uh, the denominator and the numerator between them. I shall uh, write it correctly. So equals the quotient, the integral of 2x plus 4 minus 3x plus 19 over x squared minus 2x plus 5 dx. And now each of this integral can be computed directly from the table or with uh, the previous types. So more precise is x squared plus 4x minus, and this integral is integral of type 3. I don't compute it now anymore. So this is type 3. And it can be computing by using that method. Okay. In other cases, when the denominator has a higher degree, one can write it, split the integral into simpler uh, ratios. It's a, uh, a canonical technique. Okay, so now let's uh, go further. The last method in this uh, uh, lesson, it's uh, changing variable, the change of variables. The change of variables in the Riemann integral is given by, it means the following formula. Integral of f of phi of x times phi prime of x equals f, capital F of phi of x, where capital F, it's a primitive of small f. Actually, the formula says that Computing this integral, it's not more complicating than, complicated than computing this integral. So, if we know to compute this one, we can compute this one. Uh, let's take some examples. Let's take, for example, integral of uh, x e at minus x squared dx. Now, as you can see here, we have the, follow the following observation. It's a basic one. The derivative of x squared equals 2x. So actually, one can form here the derivative of minus x squared, of course, by dividing first with minus 1 over 2. And now, who is the function phi of x? This is the problem. The function, if we take it uh, to be minus x squared, as you can see here, we have the derivative. So it will be 1 over 2 integral of e at phi of x times its derivative phi prime of x dx. According to the formula now, we need a primitive of the function the function f of x is e at x. It's primitive, it's e at x. So either here we shall get 1 over 2, e at minus x squared, with a minus in front. So this plus a constant. This is the result. Now, in uh, usually in exercises, we use a different notation and uh, an algorithm which is based on this uh, formula. Uh, more precisely, for example, we denote the function phi of x by a new letter, by a new variable. For example, integral of, uh, let's say, uh, logarithm 3 of x over x dx. What's the observation here is that uh, the derivative of logarithm of x it's 1 over x, and we have it here. So we shall put logarithm of x equals y, the new variable. And now, here we 
derivate on both sides. On the left with respect to x, on the right with respect to y, so it will be 1 over x. And we put formally dx. Here it's y, it's 1, so it's dy. So that means we shall replace the, the, the expression dx over x, which is here, by dy. And the logarithm will be y. So this will be integral of y at 3, dy. Of course, this is y at 4 over 4. And now we must come back, of course. Logarithm of uh, y was logarithm of x, so we get logarithm of x at 4 over 4, plus a constant, of course. Um, let's see another example. Let's consider, for, for example, uh, the following integral. Integral of uh, x root of x squared plus 2 dx. Here, obviously, we shall make the change of x squared plus 2 equals y. The derivative will be 2x dx equals dy. So what we need is 2x. Actually, we have x here, but we still need a 2 here. If we put a 2 here, we must divide by 2. And now this is 1 over 2 integral of root of y dy. That is 1 over 2 y at 3 over 2 over 3 over 2. That means 1 over 3 root of y at 3 to be written in a usual way. And now we replace y by uh, its value, which is root of x squared plus 2 at 3. OK, so this is the value of the, of, uh, the integral. Okay, we take a break now.